Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark. Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you are in the right place if you've got questions, and who doesn't have questions? What is going on with this crazy real estate market? But friends, you're in the right place if you want the inside information, if you want the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies that you need to go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And let's face it, the market is changing, so it's more important now than ever before to have the the real data. Um, you know, last year you could have bought a house and overpaid for it and made some bad decisions and time would have healed all. Well, 12 months later, things have changed. Actually, in the last three months, things have changed significantly. But um, good news, they're not nearly as bad as the headlines say. As a matter of fact, I don't think they're bad at all. You know, people ask me all the time, do I think the real estate market is good? Do I think it is, it's bad? I really don't think there's a good or bad um, real estate market. I just think it is what it is for that particular time period. And, you know, it's not, I don't particularly prescribe to the fact that, you know, or the belief that what goes up must can't come down, but I do believe, you know, what's going at, you know, 900 miles an hour is going to pause for a bit and take its foot off the gas. But in this case, we're still seeing forward momentum. So I share that not to sidetrack the conversation, but just to say, I am still, you know, a positive Pied Piper for real estate because there are so, so many different reasons to um, buy real estate. And we, we have a tendency to focus on the wrong things, you know, the interest rate, the price, important, but not the um, deciding factor. And we're going to cover all that in this week's show. We're going to, you know, dive into the headlines and, and dive right past them into the data because we talk about it every week that the headlines are often um, just clickbait. They're, the data in the article often um, doesn't necessarily support the headline. But anyway, we are happy to be with you. Again, my name is Mark Itell. You're listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. We do this every Thursday right here live on WPSL. I have Jennifer with me. She is my lovely producer and she is womanning the Anytime Hotline. Hey, Jen, say good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. Happy Thursday, indeed. I'm glad you're with us. Hey, if you have questions and you want to talk to Jen, call 855-462-7292 or text that number, 855-462-7292. She will get your questions on the air and we will do our very best to answer them. One more time for the kids in the back, 855-462-7292 is the toll-free anytime hotline for the Mr. Mortgage Show. And hey, when we're not in the studio having fun with you on the air, that number also rings to my office, so you can use it truly anytime. But um, hey, let's dive right in. There was a lot of data this week around the inflation numbers, right? We all saw it, you know, depending on which news outlet you listen to, the um, powers that be were telling us this was all good news, right? That, you know, this is indicating that inflation is under control or becoming under control. But the stock market certainly didn't think that and the interest rate market didn't either. Um, we had almost a quarter point jump on the news Tuesday afternoon. So, Anybody who was out shopping for a home on Monday with a pre-qualification by Tuesday afternoon, they were having to reevaluate things. And, you know, we all saw the sell off in the market. So there was a shift in the interest rate environment. Wasn't really a surprise considering the CPI number. But nonetheless, it's um, inflation is still here. And the Federal Reserve has indicated that they're going to continue to swing that big rate hike uh, stick. And the market believes that the rate hikes are going to start to be or may at least start to be larger than just three quarter of a point um, hikes because it's not really affecting inflation at a large level yet. And their goal is to get inflation under control. And at this point, interest rates are all they really have left to use. And they're, you know, they're doing their best. But um, meanwhile, it's not slowing inflation. And if you've been to the grocery store lately, or we've seen some easing at the, the gas pump, but just about every other sector is um, increasing. And that's actually a quite a good point. I and mean, I brought that up accidentally, but that CPI number was in the face of the big decline in gas prices. And that's why 
a lot of the economists went into this report thinking the numbers were going to be better than they were because at the beginning of this inflation cycle, they were pinning a lot of the responsibility of the inflation on fuel prices and not paying as much attention to all of the other categories. But this is evidence that you know inflation is rampant through all categories. And the consumer price index just, you know, demonstrated that because gas is significantly lower than it's been, although still quite a bit higher than um, where we came from. I'm not saying that it's cheap by any means, but in, in the face of all of that, we still had a big inflation number. So rates are up. But I do want to share that interest rate alone is not should not be the deciding factor when it comes to buying real estate. And I'm just going to share this real quick story with you. It, um, there's a gentleman in that, that I'm working with, a client, young single guy, super cool guy. He's been on again, off again about buying a place for the last couple of years. And, you know, he was pre-approved for a purchase in the high threes and then you know, revisit it when the uh, lease on his apartment had expired. He revisited the idea of purchasing a property. Well, rates had moved up into the mid, the low to mid fives, and he was, you know, kind of holding off on it again. And then now where rates are, he's thinking it's just, it's just not an option for him. So we were talking and we check in regularly. He's a cool guy. I enjoy talking to him. And he's got a very awesome sports car. And I asked him a question about his car, and this is what made me realize that rate alone should not be the deciding factor when making a purchase. I asked him about his car, and he absolutely loves that car. He's the guy that pulls into the parking lot, and before he goes into the mall or the grocery store, he's got the cloth and he's wiping the car down. He's probably the guy who parks on an angle in two spaces at the end of the parking lot, but don't hold that against him. He's, he's got a lot of ego tied up in the car, but anyway, super cool guy. And we were talking about that, uh, about his car. And I asked him just a few questions and I, I said, do you like your car? Oh, I absolutely love my car. So just out of curiosity, um, what's your monthly payment on that car? My monthly payment is $683. Oh, wow. Okay. $683. So for you, that's worth it. Absolutely. I'm happy to pay for it. That's my favorite car I've ever owned. I love driving that car. So it, as I mentioned, it's a sports car. So he's probably out there catting around all the ladies nights trying to meet, you know, the girls in this cool car. Here's the next question I asked him. What interest rate do you have on your car loan? What interest rate do you have? His face went blank. He has no idea the interest rate on his car loan. All he knows is $683 a month is a number that he's happy spending on the pleasure or utility that that vehicle provides for him. Now, here's the most ironic part of this. Why do we not view purchasing appreciating um, assets with that same mindset? We'll go out there and buy a car or a motorcycle or a boat, and we only focus on the payment. I can't tell you how many times we're doing a financial review during the pre-qualification stage for a client, and we're looking at all of their um, consumer debt, and the car loan is you know 11%, and the motorcycle loan is 14%, and the boat, the credit cards are 22%. Nobody thinks about that. Well, all that stuff depreciates. Your house, your real estate, over time, even at the pinnacle of a bubble, and we'll talk about that after the break, has a tendency to appreciate. So why are you holding off purchasing an asset that is in all likelihood going to be worth more next year than this year because rates are 6% and not 5%? Focus on the budget. Buy the best house you can for the budget. And that should be the number one deciding factor. The rest are ant- the, the the price shouldn't be the most important, and the interest rate shouldn't be the most important factor. It should be the budget, and then go out there and maximize your purchasing power with that budget. And I think those are those are often overlooked. We get wrapped around the axle with the you know the headline, home price, home price. Uh, interest rate, interest rate, and we stop paying attention to the most important part of it. So anyway, we'll dig into that a little bit more and some more data and some more articles after the break. But you hear the music, you know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in two. We'll be back in two short minutes to take your questions and deep dive the data. Sit tight. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you heard the man, 855-462-7292. 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline and the fastest way to get your questions on the air. If you prefer, you can shoot us an email. Just shoot us an email to radio at mr.mortgage, radio at mr.mortgage, or check out the website, mr.mortgage, never a dot com. Just type in mr.mortgage, and there's a contact us button on the top of the page, and you can always submit your questions there. But hey, I know there's some haters out there that um, heard my, uh, my rant going into the break about interest rates aren't the most important and price isn't the most important. Guys, I'm not discounting that all of that is important when you're making the overall decision because you shouldn't blindly run into something. And if you can use a strategy to buy the rate down from six to five, absolutely the lowest rate is the best choice. The cheapest price is the best choice, but we forget that the most important part of it is the budget. And we've talked about it before on the air. We don't even qualify you to an interest rate or to a price because those are variables. We qualify you to a budget amount. When a lender is reviewing how much you can buy, they tell you you qualify for a monthly payment all in, right? Principal interest, taxes, insurance. If there's a homeowners association, that's in, in that number as well. Your all in budget number that you're qualified for is whatever it is, 2000 a month, 3000 420 It doesn't matter. That's the number. And then you work backwards from there at a, whatever the interest rate of the day is versus that particular budget payment. For example, if there's no association on the property versus a property with an association, you're going to be able to buy more of a home, if you will, or a more expensive home with no association because there's no monthly payment part of the budget going to the association fees. So that's why I talk about budget being the number one thing to consider because you can drive down the highway looking at the um, tachometer, your RPM gauge, and have an idea of how fast you're going, but you don't know how fast you're going. You might not even know what direction you're going in, but the speedometer is your budget. You know, that's what you're trying to govern everything by. So I hope that makes sense. I have a tendency sometimes to think in pictures, but I share all that only because this gentleman that, that I was talking about, super cool guy, has cost himself another year in the in the apartment and he's now justifying it because rates have increased again and we have this conversation each year around this time 
because his lease renews at the end of October. So anyway, I don't want to belabor that. I just encourage everybody not to, you know, make your decisions based purely on the headlines and the fear mongering and the clickbait of the news, because quite honestly, that's all it is. And I'll share some stories with you as the show progresses, or some stories rather of some clients who uh, were my clients during the crash, the market crash of the early 2000s. And these three people took three very different strategies around navigating through the crash. And I'll share with you the outcome of each of them. But hey, before we get to that, I want to throw it over to Jen and um, see if we have any questions. So I know I saw some come in. Hey, Jen, what do we have question wise? Kent is asking, our insurance company just canceled us. How is this even legal? We've never even filed a claim. Do you have any advice on getting a new policy? What happens to our escrow? Wow. Um, Hey, Kent, that is a great question. Thanks, Jen, for that. And I'm sorry to hear that. We're hearing that more and more and more right now. The the only good news in in it, if you will, is the, the timing. Because if you just got the cancellation notice, they've got to give you the time up to your your next renewal period to find a new insurer. And there's usually a few months involved in that. And I'm hoping that's the case for you. So when it comes to your escrow, so is it legal? Yes, sadly, it's legal. An insurance company can pull out. They're, they're doing it all the time. You know, we, I think I read an article the other day, the 14th insurer just pulled out of Florida. Now, I don't know what that time period is that they're referencing that 14 insurance companies have pulled out. But my God, that's a big part of making real estate viable is having an active insurance market uh, of affordable policies because anybody will insure you at some price, but that's becoming a significant part of your monthly payment. And we're seeing people who, you know, on all other aspects may qualify for a loan, but that insurance payment and the taxes also wrap a lot of people around the axle. And we'll talk about those two pieces here in a minute. Um, But to answer your question, if you've got your escrow already set up for renewal, you have the opportunity to get your new policy in place and have it paid by the servicer with your escrows that are already there. Now that's a little more nuanced and it's going to involve you getting on the phone with your mortgage servicer and your servicer is the person who you make your payments to and they're the one who manages your escrow account. So you just need to let them know that you've gotten a cancellation notice and you're getting a new policy and you're going to want to ask them what the mortgage e clause is. What is the legal mortgage e clause? Because you're going to need to provide that to the new insurance company. And if you need an insurance agent to give you a competitive quote, give me a shout. We work with some rock stars. I just had a caller last week who called in and he's got a $1.2 million policy. And he heard me on one of the podcast episodes talking about insurance. And he just heard me mention some, uh, you know, I've got a rock star referral partner. Anyway, long story short, he contacted us during the week. And he's saving money. He's um, going to go with the the new insurer at a one point some odd million dollar policy. So I was really happy to help help him and I'm happy to help you if you need it. But back to the story. So get your new insurance in place. You can call as many place, many uh, agencies as you need to get competitive quotes and get comfortable with you with what you have. And you might end up with citizens and citizens isn't always the worst option. Um, citizens is the uh, state run insurance provider, you know, you might hear them referred to as the insurer of last resort. And they were established to to provide insurance when it was not available anywhere else to make sure insurance was available to Florida residents. So anyway, not always the worst case. Sometimes I see that um, citizens rate is coming in quite competitive, uh, competitively. Get your new policy in place. Make sure you have the mortgagee clause from the servicer Give that to the new insurance company and try to coordinate it so that it is in place and paid by your escrow balance. Now, that being said, you need to make sure there's enough money that's in the escrow to cover it because there may be a shortage that you have to pay. So you might have to pay some of it. The easier way involves you just buying the policy, paying the first year in advance, and then the servicer will refund you whatever's in your escrow for the insurance portion of it. So again, it's really, really a crappy thing to have to go through. I've been through it twice in my personal life in the last three years, and it's not fun. And you feel like you're getting cheated by the insurance company because you've paid for, you know, sometimes 
decades into this policy and now you're being told that they've dropped you. So I hope that helps. That's a fantastic question. We're getting more and more questions around it. And a lot of people are under the misconception that because they make the insurance payment as part of their mortgage payment, right? Principal interest, taxes, insurance, you're writing one check and your servicer is taking one twelfth of your tax bill and one twelfth of your insurance renewal and holding it in escrow for you. Now, a lot of people are under the misconception that because the payments are made to the mortgage company, that they're locked in and married to that insurer. And that's not the case. You can change insurance companies at any point. The easiest time to do it is upon renewal, because in theory, you're going to have enough money in escrow or at least close to enough money in escrow to pay for the new policy and not have to go into your pocket. But that being said, you can do it at any time with that other strategy where you just buy the policy, cancel the old one. If, if it's an instance where you're, you're just changing to go to a more competitive or what you consider a better insurer, and then they'll refund you the escrow balance or the portion of it that was being held for insurance. So hope that helps. That's a fantastic question. We get it all the time, especially Right now, with what's going on in the world of insurance, we're just seeing more and more people have that question. So I certainly appreciate it. If you need more information around that, give us a shout during the week. Call the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. That's how you get us during the week or get your questions on the air. But hey, you hear that music? That is my cue. We're going to be back in two. We'll be back in two very short minutes for more of the Mr. Mortgage Show and to dive into more of your questions. Sit tight. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we thank you for listening to the (laughs) the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, we do this every week right here, same time, same station. Super excited to be part of the WPSL family. Yeah, we're always happy to be with you Thursdays and uh, warming the crowd up for Clay and Buck. I always tell people, hey, we're the Clay and Buck warm-up show. (laughs) It makes us sound uh, super important, I think, because uh, they're big guys. But anyway, 855-462-7292 is the Anytime Hotline. That's 855-462-7292. And I'm going to throw it over to Jen because I believe we have more questions. Jen, do we have more questions over there? 
we've got questions and they want answers, Mark. <laughs> okay, well let's let's give it to them. I got a little long winded on that last one, so let me throw it over to Jen and uh, keep this rolling. Brittany sent this one. I was listening to your podcast and I like what you said about a rate down. Is this better than an adjustable rate loan? Um, Brittany, I think you're talking about a rate buy down. This is a great, great question, and it's really super specific to your individual case, but I'm going to cover it real quick, and we'll talk about the differences. So a rate buy down, and right now we're seeing sellers willing to contribute to the buyer's closing costs, and then we're using that contribution to buy the rate down. And we're seeing some success around that because the properties are still holding value. Some sellers are reading the headlines and they're willing to take a slightly lower price. And because of that, suddenly there's an opportunity to buy the rate down with that contribution. Um, you certainly can buy the rate down with your own money if you'd like. It's just it's always fun to shop with someone else's money and a rate buy down is no different. So back to the answer. With an adjustable rate mortgage, you're going to start off with a lower interest rate for a fixed period. And often it's a three-year fixed, a five-year fixed, seven or 10-year. Those are the typical adjustable rate mortgage terms. Now, that being said, after that fixed rate term, the, the loan starts to adjust and then continues to adjust periodically. And we can discuss all the details around an adjustable rate if you need me to. But with a buy-down, you buy the interest rate down one time and you keep that lower interest rate for the life of the loan. So in theory, you're going to pay a higher rate for the first, I don't know, let's say three years. But after that adjustment, you would be saving money if you bought the rate down low enough and rates stayed equal to or higher than where they are now. So I hope that answers your question. I really like the, the buy down strategy if you're going to stay in the property. And I just saw an interesting statistic released from the National Association of Realtors that said the average time in a residence right now is just over eight years. I think it was like 8.3 years. I'll try to find that article and post it to the Facebook group um, I, because I found it interesting. In the old days, we used to say five years and now it's eight. And I think it's because of pricing pressure and you know interest rates and everything. People seem to be sitting tight for longer. But hey, I hope that helps. The adjustable rate mortgage may start lower, but it's going to stay lower for a shorter period of time. The other thing you hear kicked around right now is a 2-1 buy-down. And in the old days, it was a 3-2-1 buy-down, and we may see that again. But a 2-1 buy-down means for the first year, the interest rate is 2% lower. For the second year, it's 1% lower, and then it adjusts to normal. That's another opportunity. Again, I kind of like the security of the lower rate for the longer period of time, but there's a right answer for everybody based on their particular circumstance. And I'm happy to walk you through it in greater detail if you need me to. Just hit the anytime hotline during the week. So, hey, Jen, I'm going to throw it over to you for another one. Do you have one? Okay. Andrew sent a text. Every time I get ready to find a house, there is more bad news about rates and prices. Do you think next year will be a better time to buy? Wow, Andrew, I hope you heard the opening of the show because I really, really think, I don't know, I really think we we do ourselves a disservice by waiting. Very rarely is waiting the answer. Um, and I only share that because we're, as human beings, we're super good at figuring out the cost of something, right? We know how much the down payment's going to be. We look at our checking account. I'm buying a $300,000 property. I'm going to put 10% down. I need 30 grand. I've got some closing costs. And you do all the math and you say, okay, this decision is going to cost me this amount of money. And then a lot of people turtle right back up and retreat. But here's where we're terrible as human beings, calculating the cost of inactivity. What is the cost of not doing something? And to use the gentleman I talked about a little earlier in the show with, this, with the fancy car, and we talk every year around this time, he was looking at properties last year, let's just say $300,000, and it's not, that's not far off from his particular circumstance. Well, guess what, guys? Most conservative data shows we are still seeing year-over-year -year appreciation at 15%. Okay, so he looked at the cost of buying last year, and somebody in his inner circle convinced him that rates were going to go down or prices were going to come down or that he watched a TikTok video about the, the market crash or a Facebook video, whatever. And he said, you know what, I'm just going to sit tight and I'm going to rent. Okay, he made that decision. 
what was the cost of not buying that property? And a lot of people will say there's no cost. He didn't have to buy it. Wrong. A $300,000 property last year is arguably worth $345,000 this year, conservatively using that 15% appreciation rate. So at very least, he cost himself $45,000 in equity, and he cost himself the, the benefits of ownership, which are writing off the interest rate, writing off the taxes. So he's paying less tax because he's making a mortgage payment instead of a rent payment. And if he's paying the exact same amount, it's cheaper to own. If he's paying less, then that's a no-brainer. But it's cheaper to own dollar. If you're paying $1,500 a month in rent or a $1,500 mortgage payment, it's cheaper to own because you get to write off the interest in the taxes associated with that mortgage payment. And a lot of people don't think about that. So the cost of inactivity is something to be considered. And I, I teased the fact that we were going to talk about what happened to these three um, families during the crash, and I promise I'm going to get to it, and it's going to play right into this question. But fantastic question. I love this topic. Just I'm not convinced that tomorrow is better than today because yesterday was better than today. So tomorrow might be worse. If rates keep going up, if we keep um, seeing appreciation, uh, it's going to become harder and harder to buy. So jumping back to my first thought, focus on the budget. If you can pull the trigger on something that works for you and your family at the budget based on today's circumstances, nothing is preventing you from refinancing if rates go down or if you get transferred and you have to sell. And let's say you can't sell. You can always hold it and rent the property. There's all kinds of options around owning real estate that are beneficial. So anyway, I'm not going to beat that drum because I'm super passionate about it. But if you have questions, I'd love to have a deeper conversation with you um, off the air. But I'm going to throw it over to Jen to see if we can get another question in. Mike sent an email. How much is the down payment on a rental property? It'll be my first investment property if that matters. That was Mike. Okay, Mike, that's a good question. So you hear me advertise the landlord loan, and that's probably the easiest loan product to qualify for as a first-time investor. And the down payment with that particular loan program is around 15 or 20%, depending on your credit score. And again, with that loan program, they're not looking at your income. They're just looking at the income from the rental property. And as long as it pays the debt service of ownership, it's going to cover the expenses, principal interest, taxes and insurance, the cost of ownership. That's a fundable deal. So figure around 15%, 20%, and then you're going to want somewhere between three and 12 months reserves. And reserves are just money left over in your account after you purchase it. And when you hear the term three months reserves, they're talking about three months of the expenses. Let's say it's a $5,000. You're buying a four unit building. A $5,000 payment, uh, three months reserves would be 15000 So when you hear that number, when you hear that term reserve, it's the monthly payment associated with that property times however many months that the lender is requiring for reserves because they want you to have enough money to transition into ownership, cover some vacancies and be able to, you know, manage that transition without, you know, they don't want you spending your last dime. So hopefully that makes sense to you. If you need more information about that, that anytime hotline is 855-462-7292. And Jen, Jen's holding up her finger. Are you giving me the finger or holding up your finger? We've got more questions and I went long winded on that. So you hear that music? That is my cue. We will be back in two. Sit tight. We'll be back in two minutes to take more of your questions and dive a little bit deeper into the data. Sit tight. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. 
As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you heard the man, 855-462-7292, or visit the website, mr.mortgagenevera.com, mr.mortgage, and at the top right-hand corner is the contact us button or box. I don't remember exactly what it is. I need to get on there more often, but you can submit your questions that way. And Jen is back there. Arms are swinging and she is getting things done. What? Okay. 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 She's telling me we got some questions. She's got her finger. I don't know she if she's telling me that I'm number one or that we've got more questions, but Hey, let me throw it over to Jen and get the next question on the air. Jen, what do we have? Here's a question from Bailey. What are the pros and cons of an FHA mortgage? Are they only for first-time buyers? Hey, Bailey, that is a great question. There are no cons to a, a FHA mortgage. They're, they got a bad rap during the pandemic because everyone was looking for over-asking price, cash offers with no contingencies, and the FHA offer by default has an appraisal contingency built in. So if you're a seller and you're selling a property that you think is overpriced and you're looking at an FHA offer and you're afraid the property won't appraise, well, that FHA uh, addendum in the contract gives the buyer the right to cancel the contract if the collateral is not worth the agreed upon sales price. From the seller standpoint, that's it. There's all these misconceptions around an FHA appraisal picks out more of the property conditions. If you don't have peeling paint and exposed wires and the roof is not leaking, the majority of homes go through an FHA appraisal process with no repairs being called out. Now, that being said, if you're selling something that's in disrepair, an FHA loan might not be the best. But from the buyer's standpoint, the only big difference is with an FHA mortgage, There's a mortgage insurance component built into the payment. You're paying mortgage insurance. With a conventional loan of more than 80% loan to value, so you're putting less than 20% down, there's also mortgage insurance. The big difference is with an FHA loan, if you put the minimum down payment down, the only way to get rid of that mortgage insurance over time is a refinance. With a conventional loan, eventually, eventually, <laughs> eventually, once you've paid the principal down or the property's appreciated to a point that the loan balance represents 78% or less of the value, you can ask the servicer to drop the mortgage insurance without having to go through a refinance. You may have to pay for an appraisal, but that's it. That being said, the majority of people do not keep their first mortgage, nor do they keep their property long enough, with the exception of the most recent market that we've been in, because we had such a fast run-up. Most people don't hang around long enough to get that 78% number to drop the mortgage insurance. Here are some of the benefits. The interest rate is typically lower. Right now, we're seeing almost a three-quarter of a point difference, conventional to FHA. 
and the mortgage insurance component is less with FHA on the higher loan values with the lower score. So I say all that to and just basically say I, there's no problem with an FHA loan. As long as the property is not, you know, leaky roof, exposed wires, you should have no problems with an FHA loan. And if somebody's telling you different, have them give me a shout because I'd love, love, love to walk them through the real inside information about FHA because the FHA and VA loans got a bad rap and it was not fair by any means. So hopefully that helps. Um, If you need more information, just give us a shout. But uh, I'm going to toss it over to Jen and see what we have. Susan is asking, you were just talking about buying down the interest rate. Will this work for a refinance? We've been holding out on our refinance, but rates just keep going up. Up and up and up, right, Susan? (laughs) It's kind of what I was talking about with that question on the last segment. Waiting is often not the um, best decision, but I get it. You didn't know. Some article somewhere probably told you rates are going to be lower by this time. But anyway, to answer your question, yes, you can buy the rate down. And I, I think I mentioned that earlier. You don't. You can use your own money to buy the rate down. So paying um, what's called discount points can lower the interest rate. So yes, as part of a refinance strategy, and it might make sense because if you're refinancing and you've got a bunch of newfound equity, you're using the house's money to use a Vegas term, right? Um, I'm not saying it makes sense for everybody, but it may make sense to buy that rate down. And we're seeing people look to refinancing now where a year or two ago, they were thinking they were never going to touch that interest rate. But every time the Federal Reserve increases the overnight rate, credit card payments go up. You know, we see with the exception of a easing in gas, everything is more expensive now. So people are leaning on their equity more now than ever. And I made a joke the other day. I didn't realize how strong I was because it used to take me, you know, two, sometimes three trips to carry $250 worth of groceries from the car into the house. Well, now I'm doing it with one trip and I've got a free hand to open the door. And it's not because I'm any stronger. It's just because the uh, amount of groceries we're buying for the same money is far less. But anyway, I hope that helps. I appreciate the question. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Larry sent a text. Is there a rule of thumb for how much equity we can pull out of a house with a reverse mortgage? I really never thought about doing this before, but we're on a fixed income and the cost of living is killing us. Hey, Larry, man, I am sorry, sorry to hear that. But you are the person I was just speaking about when I made that 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 last comment. I mean, we are all getting pinched by this inflation and the cost of living and the CPI numbers that were released this week show that it's not cooling And if you're living on a fixed income, there's only so much you can do. So I love the fact that you are asking about reverse mortgages because they're super, super close to my heart. Um, You hear me talk about it all the time. They're not right for everybody, but the person that they're right for, my God, they can be life changing. So rule of thumb, and this is just a rule of thumb because home value and your age are the biggest factors with how much equity that you can tap, if you will, but typically around 50% of the equity. Now, that be, or 50% of the value, rather. That being said, the older you are, you can access more because there is a mortality table applied to an amortization schedule, and they determine based on average lifespans and interest rates, you know, how much, how long you're going to live and how much you're going to owe after a period of time. The cool thing about a reverse mortgage or today's reverse mortgage is it's non-recourse. And if you die first, your spouse can stay until his or her death. Whoever goes first, the husband or wife can remain in the property until their death. If you owe more than the property is worth when you pass and you leave it to your estate, It's non-recourse. They can slide the keys across the table to the bank and walk away with all of the other assets in the estate. They don't have to liquidate anything to satisfy a deficit. And other cool things are there's no prepayment penalty. You can sell sell the house at any time, take the equity, and um, you can refinance it should you choose. If one of your heirs inherits it and wants to occupy the property, they can refinance it into their name. So I love that you've asked that question and welcome the opportunity to um, talk a little deeper about it off the air. So thank you for that. And if you need me, give me a call 855-462-7292. But hey, let's get another question. And Jen, do we have another one over there? Scott is asking, we're getting ready to sell our house. A real estate agent is telling us we may need to get a new roof because a buyer won't be able to get insurance. 
Is this true? It doesn't leak, and it's only 18 or 20 years old. <laughs> 18 or 20 years old. <laughs> That's kind of the drop dead date uh, recently. It's interesting because we we buy these roofing products, and it's stamped right on the packaging of the shingles. 45-year warranty. And we think that, you know, that's a 45-year roof. And then the uh, roofing inspector or the home inspector calls out that they think the lifespan is three years. And then the insurance company starts the clock ticking, and they're going to call you in three years and want you to replace that roof. So I don't know that that's the case if you're, you know— if it's an asphalt shingle roof, it may be, but it's more likely that the buyer will have to pay a higher premium because of the age of the roof. But if it's a metal roof or a tile roof, you may be well within the lifespan. But if you need information regarding, you know, a wind mitigation or a um, four point inspection, which will determine the likely uh, lifespan of the roof, I'll be happy to give you some phone numbers. Your agent may know somebody that they can send out there too, but maybe plan for the eventuality that somebody's going to negotiate against you about the old roof. But I'm not positive that at you know 18 or 20 years that you're by default going to have a difficult time. We are seeing it more and more of a challenge getting insurance on older roofs, but it, it has more to do with the remaining, I'm trying to remember the exact term in the report, but it's like the likely remaining lifespan or the useful remaining lifespan. I'll find that exact term and throw it up on the Facebook page. But that's the, um, that number is what's triggering a lot of this conversation around insurance. So yeah, I appreciate that question. It's one we're getting a lot of in our daily practice. You know, we're hearing more and more complaints about insurance, either cancellations or in this case, selling the property and the buyers getting quoted astronomical amounts. If you need a good insurance agent or want a competitive quote, please give me a call. I've got some rock stars that have been hitting it out of the park, but hey, you hear the music, you know what that means? That is my cue. We'll be back in two. Sit tight for two short minutes and we'll be back with more of the show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we do this each week right here on WPSL Live every Thursday at 11 o'clock a.m., I don't know what's on the station at 11 o'clock p.m. Maybe Cliff stays up late and does an overnight. But, um, hey, is that not the best voice in radio? If you're not listening to Cliff, 
in the mornings on um, Swap Shop. My man he has the ultimate radio voice. Super cool guy. But uh, hey, um, while I'm thinking about it, you've heard me mention we're doing that Molly's House fundraiser coming up in the first weekend of October. Hey, Jen, do me a favor and uh, tell the folks about that uh, poker run and the charity event for Molly's House. Uh, will you? Yeah, that perfect. Read that for me, would you? Sure thing, Mark. Join us Sunday, October 2nd for Wayne Sloat's first annual Purple Cow Poker Run, benefiting Molly's house. The address is 430 Southeast Osceola Street, Stewart. Live music with our own Switch and Whiskey. For more information, please contact Katie at Molly's house, 772-223-6659. All right. Thanks for that, Jen. Yeah. If you guys have a chance to be a part of this, it's going to be awesome. We're going to bring, I haven't decided we ride. So, um, we're either going to ride the bikes in the poker run, or I may bring, um, the old car out and get some friends with some old classic cars and drive the cars over there and just hang out and be a part of the festivity. So if you want to see, uh, behind the scenes and meet the motley crew that makes up our Mr. Mortgage Mafia, I'd love you to be a part of that. So check us out October 2nd over at Molly's house. But, um, Hey, we've had a great show so far this week. We've had some really good questions, a lot around, um, waiting and to see what the market's going to do. And you know, my opinion of that. And then we've had some conversations regarding insurance and, I promised I was going to share a story with you about some people who bought during the peak of the market in the early 2000s. And I'm going to run through this real fast, but I had three individual families that I'm going to reference. And one person defaulted and went into foreclosure on purpose. They just said, I'm not paying. The house isn't worth this anymore. The bank can have it back. And they lived in the property for a while, went into foreclosure, gave the keys back and moved into an apartment building. It took them seven years to get their credit and their money right so they could go buy again. And they went and bought darn near the same house, not the same house, but the same four bedroom swimming pool, West exposure in Port St. Lucie over by, um, uh, what is that? Savona? Um, anyway, it doesn't matter where they bought it. Same house. Another, uh, client did a strategic default and negotiated a mortgage modification went through lawsuits, threatened foreclosure, ruined his credit, took many years to get his credit back up, finally sold the house last year, went and bought a new house. And when he did the math, he didn't, he was no further ahead. By the time he paid all the legal fees, he would have had more equity in the property if he just stayed and paid. My first friend that I mentioned also, same thing. It would have been better off if he stayed. And then there was another couple who purchased a property and thankfully, they loved the house and they paid 380000 for it. And during the bust, if you will, the house next door foreclosed and sold for $130,000. And they were gutted. It was, you know, now their house is worth half of what they paid. The good news is they could afford the payment. It was still cheaper than rent. They liked where they were. They stayed there. Long story short, it's been 17 years. The house is paid for free and clear. And the appraisal just came in at 540, I believe it was, or 538. My point is they've got a half a million dollars worth of equity and kept their credit intact. So there's many different strategies around approaches, approaching a housing market, approaching a bubble. Time typically heals all in real estate. And that's why I think even if there's a market correction, it makes sense to own real estate. But anyway, I just wanted to say thanks. We've had some great questions this week. And I've got a favor to ask. If you find the show entertaining... If you find any of this interesting, valuable, please share the show. If you've got any friends or family or coworkers who are out there talking about real estate, they're thinking about buying or selling, they, they have these same questions. Does it make sense? What are rates going to do? I'd love for you to turn them on to the show. You, you can listen to all the back episodes at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Give us a shout at the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. Or visit us on the web at mr.mortgage, never a .com, just mr.mortgage. So we've had a blast with you this week. It's been another fun week. Man, time flies when we're in the PSL. We really, really love it here. So, hey, Jen, thank you for your help today. She, yeah, I know, I know. Tell the folks goodbye, Jen. Goodbye, Jen. See you next week. 
All right, you hear the music? You know what that means? That is the end of another week. My God, time is flying. We had so much fun with you. If you need us during the week, you know how to get us, 855-462-7292 or on the web at Mr. Dot Mortgage, Mr. Dot Mortgage, never a dot com. But hey, we had a fantastic week with you. We're going to be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. right here on WPSL. Have a fantastic week. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.